Is cheating really the end all? So me, 29 male, and my girlfriend, 31 female, have been dating for 8 years now. I met her in college and she was a senior of mine. I was honestly smitten by her and pursued her and she said yes. We dated for one year till I passed out. Then we met to decide what to do next. I said I want to keep dating and she agreed. Anyways she was going to a foreign country for her masters for two years and we agreed to to LDR. It was honestly not the best relationship during those two years. I was young and pursuing my PhD and she was busy in her studies and we spoke for about 5-10 minutes daily. Yet somehow we never broke up. We stayed in our relationship I don't know how. I guess both of us didn't want to initiate the conversation of breaking up and so we just stayed together even though we never behaved like a couple. Anyways she came back after two years and we met and talked about future and somehow agreed to move in together because well that's what you do after dating for three years, right? I still had some work to do in order to complete my PhD and she had gotten a job by now. But at this time a change came upon us. Maybe because we had matured a little or maybe because we were finally together but we actually started to enjoy each other's company. We started to have weekly date nights, better communication, fun activities like cycling or just walking regularly etc. Our relationship became better by leaps and bounds. She also started going to individual therapy around this time. Anyways the last 5 years have been amazing and if you ask me it's like we are still teenagers in love. So now I thought. Okay time to talk about engagement and marriage now. Tuesday night we were sitting together after dinner when I said well it's time to discuss engagement and marriage now. I don't want to have kids in my 40s, lol. She went quiet and a serious expression came on her face. I said okay don't stress out, we will talk later. She said no, it's not that I have to tell you something. Then she went on to tell me that she cheated on for one year out of two years when she was abroad. I asked well why did you stop after one year? She said her roommate at the time asked her if she was in an open relationship or is she just cheating because she had seen her talking to me. The guilt of being pointed out as a cheater worked as a wake-up call to her and she stopped. That's when she decided that she will give her best to our relationship when she came back. So she came back and started therapy and really put in an effort in our relationship and it suddenly dawned on her that we make a very good team and have so much fun together. And to be honest the last five years have been amazing. She has been an amazing partner, we have incredible sexual and emotional chemistry. But I asked how did she cheat on me for one year? Did she not feel guilty she said well I didn't love you then so I was not afraid to lose you. It was only when her own actions were pointed out that she stopped. Then I asked why tell me now, I had no way to find out and she said well I couldn't let us start our NW phase of life with such a huge lie. She also said if I want to break up she want object but she wanted us to continue and was willing to do anything including talking a polygraph test. So what do I do here Reddit? On the one hand she cheated yes, but we were hardly a couple then. I may not have cheated but I was definitely the worst boyfriend otherwise. And when she came back she did a 180 turn. She did therapy, put in real effort in our relationship and I don't think she has cheated in the last 5 years. We have open phone policy, she is never protective over her phone, is very open about her schedule, doesn't get drunk and never stays anywhere overnight. She has been an incredible partner in the last 5 years. I am confused here. Please advice. Are you the type of guy that can get over this? 10 years from now will you hold resentment? I couldn't look at her again the same way so this would not work for me over time. It would eat me alive and eventually implode. Some guys can overlook someone else fucking their girl. Marriage is a long fucking time. What happens in another 5 years when work is busy and you have kids? She's certainly able to cheat on you. How can you trust her again? To me, cheating is a deal breaker. I know that your relationship has been great for the past 5 years. But understand that she only did that after she realized it was wrong. The infidelity went on for 1 year. 1 year and not a word of it to you. I didn't love you back then so I was not afraid to lose you. If she wasn't afraid to lose you, then why didn't she break it off with you? That's a pathetic reason to cheat on someone that you barely loved. She kept it for 5 years. If it was me, I would have been thinking about other things that she's possibly keeping from you. If you really think that you can trust her and live a life without having to think about what had happened, then I say go for it. Some can move on and be happy. I typically say once a cheat, always a cheat. But really, it's up to you. If you can stay with her and live with the fact that she cheated on you and lied to you for an entire year up until she got caught, then that is your call. 
It does sound like it's been many years and she supposedly changed as a person. No red flags. Circumstances were just bad but you also had no apparent suspicion the entire year that she was cheating. I personally would have a hard time knowing that in the back of my mind, my partner cheated on me. Even though it was forever ago, even though we were, hardly a couple then. Keep in mind she also hid it from you this entire time. I'd let it go and enjoy your current relationship. As you said, things have been great for five years. You were barely a couple back then. You were a terrible boyfriend back then she did a 180 and you have good protocols in place. Why ruin a good thing you have now because of a facile truism? Once a cheater always a cheater, and perhaps a bit of hurt pride on your part? Sounds like you want to forgive her, so forgive her. She didn't have to tell you and you probably never would have found out. Maybe a polygraph and some MC, IC if you are having some hangups. If you are asking what I would do, I would break up with her because this is a situation that I just wouldn't want to exist in. However I have a friend who cheated on his girlfriend multiple times with multiple girls while they were young, and now they own a home together and are happily married with children. It's a question of whether you can come to terms and live with the fact that she cheated on you. If you can accept this and trust her again, then you can try and make it work. Ask her for a one-sided open relationship. See if she is willing to stay with you if the shoe was on the other foot. Odds are, you will get your answer. Don't forget the six years of lying by omission, it's not just the one year of cheating. There are strong couples who can navigate through those dark times and there are couples who cannot. If you do decide you can forgive her and carry on you cannot bring it up at a later date to have a dig at her. My suggestion is wait on the engagement make sure you can weather this storm and come out the other side. No longer attracted to my husband. We have been married for over 14 years and have two wonderful kids together. He is an amazing dad, reliable partner and overall nice person. He has been my rock through all the difficult phases that I have had since we got married. I've had 100% trust on him on all matters and thought we will be together for life. He always seemed sordid and is a smart guy who is doing well for himself. Everyone thinks we are a perfect couple. I have never felt the need to go through his phone or suspect him for anything so far. Last year, during the pandemic, we ended up working remotely from home. It was a busy time since we had to juggle so many things. Home, work, kids, school etc. It wasn't easy but we managed it. Few months back, I started to feel a disconnect with him. Could not point my finger on to what exactly. All these years I have never had a need to check on him for anything. That was the kind of trust I have always had on him. However there was this nagging feeling of something not so right. So I ended up going through his phone and sure enough I found something that shook me to my core. He was trying to chat with a woman with boobs for her display pic. He had texted her asking if she was free to chat with him. At first I didn't understand what was happening, but when it sunk in, I confronted him and he was very sorry, said it was a slip on his end. He was stressed and was watching porn and decided to sex someone from the ad he saw next to the porn video. This was stupid on so many levels. Of course, I lost my shit and was so done with him, however after much begging and pleading and new promises, I decided to give it another chance. Mainly because, our kids are my world and I don't want anything to ever hurt them. Couple of months since then, I just don't feel any attraction towards him anymore. I am here playing my role of a good wife and mother. I feel like myself when I am at my workplace or outside the house. I used to think very high of him, but now I feel like he is not worthy of me. It's not like I am arrogant in thinking so highly about myself, but I would have never done this to him. I work in a male-dominated industry, and all my colleagues are men. I easily pass off as someone who has just started there even though I have been working for him the past 10 years. I get a lot of attention from men, but I always set clear boundaries. Anyhow, I have brought up this issue with him, but he goes on the tangent that, it was a minor slip on his part and he would have never gone further if he had a chance and he would never cheat on me and I am stretching this way too much and he loves me the most, it's not about love or cheating on me anymore. The trust is broken and I don't feel the same. We still have sex once in a while but it's more like a chore on my end. Divorce is not an option, looking at the bigger scheme of things, wherein he plays a very important part as a dad and son-in-law, I can repress my feelings and stay with him. But Reddit, am I stretching this? I don't believe him when he says he won't cheat on me. I am sure he will if he were to get a chance. As for me, I am noticing other men paying attention to me and sometimes even indulging in a bit of harmless flirting at work. Something which I have never done before. 
There have been thoughts wherein I feel, how would it be if I were with someone else? I know these thoughts won't lead anywhere, but I feel like I am floating aimlessly these days. I am not sure what I want to achieve with this post, but I wanted to tell someone about this since I can't tell this to anyone in my real life. The reason you don't feel attraction to him right now is because you're mad at him and disgusted by what he did. Give it time and see if that changes. But if it doesn't, or if his behavior doesn't change, then you'll both be better off not together. But don't end a marriage without trying literally everything. And for everyone saying you're overreacting, that's not for us to decide. You set your own boundaries. I wouldn't end my marriage over porn, but interacting with females personally is something I'd consider cheating. So you decide for yourself and don't let anyone tell you what you should feel. I have a feeling most the people telling you that you're overreacting are men. And the people telling you you're not went through what you have personally. Just my observation. You're not overreacting at all. Trying to interact with a real person who has the option to respond is not porn. It crosses a line. Porn is a spectator sport. Here he was actively trying to engage with another person for sexual content. Your feelings are valid but I would recommend therapy to help you reconcile them. I see for both of you as well as MC. Please check into marriage therapy. The resentment will only grow if you don't nip it now. Couple counseling. Go post on R. Surviving infidelity they will have much better advice and support for you. Also look up chump lady. Don't stay for the kids it will really hurt them later in life talk to a therapist about it but never stay just because of the kids. If you can't make it work you need to leave. Also look around for a lawyer really look around for a shark of a lawyer and see what your options are. It good to know all possible outcomes. MC and IC for starters if you want to stay. Dig there is always more. You don't feel attracted to him because you psychologically cut ties, distanced as a trauma response, which is completely normal. I would take advantage and leave before you get reattached, personally. He is in truest deviant type. I could write a book about everything I've had to deal with in him and it'd probably be a bestseller. My soul is broken right now. I'm trying desperately to mend it. Thank you kindly for your words. Love and light to you. I, 34M. Think I just made the worst mistake of my life by divorcing my now ex-wife, 31F. So we've been together for nearly 10 years, 2 years dating, 8 married. And hash x200b. She is a kind, faithful and honest person in every single aspect of life from money to relationships, for me, she's the most trustworthy person in the world. And that's really important to me. And hash x200b. However, things were not perfect. When we got married, she moved to my city, where I had bought a house for us, I paid for everything, but made sure she was part of every single decision of everything in the house, from choosing the place to decor, and just never adapted. And hash x200b. She became cold, never initiated sex, often would refuse to have if I initiated, never complimented me, and I always told her how much she was pretty and hot, never showed no interest at all on my work, never showed any admiration from what I had achieved, I came from a broken home and a poor family, and never had much to talk about. I mean, she was silent most of the time. And hash x200b. The only moments she was happier, were when we used to visit her family. And that's all and hash x200b. She was always quiet, didn't have much to talk to, and that absolutely killed me. I work home, so that meant we were together the whole day and the thought of sharing the same space with someone that is totally indifferent to you is one of the worst feelings I experienced in my life. And hash x200b. It was her dream to study business and administration, but she couldn't because her family had no money. So I insisted on her going to college, paid everything and even drove her to college every day for four years. And so she graduated, but never worked a single day. And hash x200b. I told her to find a hobby, that I would pay anything she wanted. And she just did nothing. She just never pulled her weight. And hash x200b. I started to grow more and more resentful and we became distant. Whenever I would talk to her about it, she would get mad and say I was being unfair. So I gave up. And hash x200b. She left home a couple days ago and, even with so many problems, I just think that I won't find anyone better. Every other girl I dated disappointed me two of them lied a lot and turned out to be gold diggers. And hash x200b. Not sure if this is rant, I'm completely lost. Any thoughts would be helpful. Thanks a lot. And hash x200b. Too long did not read. Divorced an honest and sweet woman that was indifferent to me and now I regret, 
feeling I will never find someone honest again. And hash x 200 b. Edit. I meant she would often refuse sex if I initiated. It sounds like you had almost no relationship for many years. Divorce was the right option. Stupid question. Since you work from home have you ever considered moving closer to her family? What's the regret here? You weren't compatible, certainly not happy. You need to stop putting her on a pedestal as if your life is over without her and start exploring more of your life. Geez, who wants to live with a popsicle? I understand that you're discouraged but what you had with your ex-wife wasn't even really a relationship. Dating is tough and you meet some shitty people. Everybody goes through it. But that doesn't mean that you won't find a relationship where you are adored, cherished and treated with respect. It's out there for you. You shouldn't settle for a faux relationship with no love in it. Sounds like she also disappointed you. Sounds cliche but the world doesn't start and end with her. There are many amazing persons out there. Sometimes wonderful people are just not happy together. I was married to an amazing man for 10 years and we were both so depressed together that we decided to separate. He's still amazing, but way happier now. Same here. You are allowed to grieve the possibility but note that in reality it just didn't work. If you think you two could be happy together, tell her so, get some counseling, and try again. If no, be gentle with yourself, recognize that sometimes good people just don't work out together. From what you wrote it sounds like you dropped the ball. All of what you mentioned you offered her are external things things someone, someplace else could offer. What you didn't mention, however, is asking her what she needed. This entire post is about what you did but did she communicate anything? What's her reaction to you initiating the divorce? Anyways your relationship seemed off. I don't think divorce was a bad idea. You just regret it now cause your mind is in scarcity mode. Adopted 7 year old stepdaughter and seeking advice to ensure our relationship stays good. Throw away because not usual content. When I first met my wife, she was a single mom to the cutest daughter I have ever seen. She had left her abusive ex, and her daughter was scared of men. As soon as I met my wife, I knew she was the one for me, and I already knew that I would do anything and everything for her. Slowly I started to gain her daughter's trust, who initially stayed far away from me, and she would let me hold her hand as she crossed the street, sit next to me to watch princess movies, and let me cut up her dinner and help her eat. I still remember the first time she asked me to do something with her like it was yesterday. She asked me to go the zoo and see the giraffes. I bought us matching stuffed giraffes that day and she laughs at me now and tells me, Daddy, you are too old for stuffed animals. Throughout the years we got closer and closer, and I started to be more of a parent to her and less of a friend, and she started to call me Daddy. I now have two younger sons and my wife is pregnant with another daughter, but she will always be my firstborn and the one who made me a dad. Firstborns always have a special place in your heart. I am so proud of her. My wife doesn't think that we need to save every bit of artwork she does at school, but I love it all and keep it all in a box. Today the adoption became official. She has always been mine, but now she is legally mine. I am legally her dad. My daughter has my last name. I hope I do her proud and spend the rest of her life teaching her and loving her mother and siblings. I made this account because I just want to tell everyone that I am now her dad, and I think people who know personally might be a bit annoyed by now. I want to make sure that our relationship stays good and want to avoid the, you're not my dad, in the future. Does anyone have advice? Too long did not read. Adopted 7-year-old stepdaughter and want to make sure the relationship stays good. 1. Don't ever talk bad about her mother within her earshot. 2. Your actions mean more than what you say. So set the example, don't just tell her what to do. 3. Don't tell her what not to do. Tell her what to do. For example, don't say don't throw your coat on the floor. Say let's hang up our coats when we come in the house. 4. If you praise, give an example to substantiate what she was praised about. Instead of just saying what a pretty drawing, add because that sun is so bright. 5. Don't praise her all the time about everything. After a while it loses its sincerity. 6. Tell her you love her often. Tell her mother you love her in your daughter's presence. As a stepdad, bonus dad in my eyes, myself. There's still a real possibility as she grows up to prepare yourself for her to say, you're not my real dad, at some point in your life. My situation is completely different to yours, but having that emotional preparation could save you some heartbreak in the future. That being said, it sounds like you're doing a wonderful job and she's in great hands. Just keep loving her like you do and everything will end up going okay.
If you're ever in need there's a small subreddit called r stepdads that might be able to answer any other specific questions that pops up. Embrace the fact that there's probably nothing you can do to avoid the you're not my dad in the future. Sometimes kids say cruel stuff they don't mean in the heat of the moment. But forgiving them and continuing to love them unconditionally is part of being a parent. This is so sweet sparkling heart sparkling heart sparkling heart my heart is so full. Don't worry, she knows you're her dad. I'll just tell you what my dad does. He's always there for me, always supportive. Someone I can talk to about anything. Also, teenage girls and their moms tend to have some friction. You might be the mediator in this situation. Just be supportive, understanding and kind to both of them. Why ever are you asking for advice? There are a great deal many people in this world who should look to you as an example of what to do, how to be with a stepchild. You genuinely love and respect this child and her mother and you are good both to and for them. There may be a time, yeah. Teenagers can be hell my friend, when you clash, but those times are brief. Simply continue regarding and treating her as your own. In other words, just keep doing what you're doing and, to her, you will always be daddy. OMG my eyes are tearing up at this. This is just so sweet. I don't have advice that others haven't already given you. But I want to tell you that you seem like a great dad. You became a dad even before the adoption with the amount of love you have for her. You probably don't need any advice but the fact that you're asking for it shows how much you want to make sure you'll always have a good relationship with her. You sound like a good dad already but talk to her. Make an effort to learn what she likes and listen to her. It may seem like small things but to a child that can be their whole world. I think you got this and congratulations on the adoption. Just listen to her. So often adults want to do all the talking and all the teaching, but you have as much to learn from her as she does from you. I have a 23-year-old daughter who is also in many ways my best friend, so I can tell you from experience that daughters are awesome and it just keeps getting better. You sound like an awesome dad. You and your daughter are both so lucky to have each other.